bunch of stuff, uh, cans of tuna in, in a crisis. That's the sort of stuff that people are going to You know, want. Harry, this is scary because I study this every day as a layman from every angle. And any way you look at it, it runs from horrible to apocalyptic. And absolutely, I tell my listeners do this. This is what I've been doing. And I've got family that's awake, but some family that says, you've been saying this for so long, they don't believe it because I was so visionary. But if you study history, these cycles are there. Right. And now I look at the U.S. government, the, the, the British defense ministry, all the, the universities, all their internal prospectuses actually say what you're saying. But just like Japan for 20 plus years has denied they're even in a recession. They've been in a depression. The, uh, I mean, they're literally having mass mental illness just collapsing over there. But if you read a Japanese newspaper, they say they're doing fine. And I see that same scenario here. We just slide into this depression and then, and then they just keep denying it forever. I, it, it's mass mental illness. Well, and the best way of denial is quantitative easing. You just keep throwing money in the economy, like like taking more of a drug to keep from coming down. That's all they're doing is masking it over. We're not facing reality. And again, Japan has proven they have a, 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 an echo boom generation. Their economy should have turned up again around 2003 by our demographics, and and it and it didn't very much. And then they, and they went back and in, in a downturn. It's because they've never dealt with their debt. They've never let their economy rebalance. You have to rebalance. The free market system knows how to do this, just like your body does if you eat bad sushi. It'll just flush it out any way it can. That's what the economy was trying to do. Flush out this debt, flush out these asset bubbles, flush out these derivatives. This is, I mean, we're on steroids and we're going to die from it uh, and be in a coma forever if we don't deal with this. So so I just, I'm, sure. I'm just waiting for the darn crisis to happen. What's the time frame? The next year or two? I, I think we're within a, a month or two of a stock top. Stocks will go first, and then real estate and economy will follow. The economy goes down. You're going to have bad bank loans rack up very quickly. Real estate. Oh, you're saying six forward. months Banks to a year. Be in big trouble. Yeah, I say it starts this year, and I think the biggest trigger. It may not be the first trigger, but the biggest trigger that makes this a crisis that central banks like the Federal Reserve cannot fight. If that China bubble bursts, and, and it's already showing the cracks, they're having. Uh, uh, wealth management products and institutions blow up and start to default, and it's happening more and more. That bubble, be, people don't understand the Chinese, the rich Chinese, top 10% control 60% of income, 50% of consumer spending, 85% of the real estate and financial assets, and they save 65 to 70% of their money. And they invest it all in real estate. They don't like stocks and bonds, and, and their stock market's been a total roller coaster. They also buy gold. Yeah, and they buy gold. So if, if, they, if their wealth collapses because this real estate bubble collapses, they're going to stop buying real estate sure. around the world. They're going to have to stop investing. They're going to stop spending. And China will implode. Everybody says there's going to be a soft landing in China. You don't have an extreme bubble. They're already having here. thousands of riots a month. Yeah, that, that, and, and then the rich people are leaving the country voluntarily. They are leaving. When I was just in Australia for three weeks uh, promoting the book and stuff and lecturing. And, and it's like Chinese are buying everything in. In, in Australia, and they're buying Southern California, San Francisco, Vancouver, London, New York. They're These evacuating. They're keeping the bubble going. When they stop buying, like the Japanese did in the early 90s, we're going to see real estate bubbles collapse around the world, especially in the most bubbly cities. This, this, this is going to be a major crisis because real estate is what really hits people. Well, Harry, Dan, I mean, I've had you on before. You've never been this wound up. I mean, you, you, you're really concerned. No, no, I am. I mean, again, I, I cut the demographic clip. I went to, to public. I had to change publishers and cut my advance 70% because I said this book, my publisher wanted to get out in September. I said, it's going to be over by then. We're going to be into the crisis. I want to warn people before it happens because this only happens once in a lifetime. That's why, like you say, people are delusional. They don't understand this. A depression like this, a debt detox, whatever you want to call it, um, a deflationary crisis only happens once in a lifetime so people don't see it coming they don't understand it and they don't know what to do when it happens this book tells you from a to z what's going to happen what's going to go bad how i want to carry it what I investments wanna... are going to go down and then what to do about it there is some you can this can be the, the most profitable time in your life if you simply see the inevitable while everybody else is in delusion and denial Wow. Man, we got to get you back sooner. I promise to go to calls. We only got like 10 minutes left. We're going to break in a minute. Uh, RB uh, wants to talk to the guest from Minnesota. You're on the air with Mr. Dent. Go ahead. 
Yeah. Hi, Alex. Hi, Harry. Um, I've really noticed that in the wake of the NGO slash EU slash USA backed illegal coup of the democratically elected president of Ukraine, all these big uh, central banks have just been salivating like dogs around a dog bowl. It's just disgusting. And then on top of that, you see like this the big world vampire squid, the EU and the junior world vampire squid, Goldman Sachs, is salivating like dogs. What do you think is going to happen there? Well, you know, uh, this, this is something we also cover in the book. We have a geopolitical cycle, and I don't know what causes, but 18 years we'll have a good world when nothing goes wrong, like 1983 to 2000. Then from 2001, starting with 9-11 and the tech wreck and going all the way to the Iraq War, Afghanistan War, you know, the, the Syria, the Arab Spring, the Indian Spring, and now Russia and Ukraine. We just had a series of, of political challenges, geopolitical problems around the world. I think this is going to get worse. I think, you know, it's kind of a little bit like Hitler, where Putin says, okay, we took over Crimea, but they wanted us anyway. We're not going any farther. He wants Ukraine. He wants to rebuild the Soviet Union. Russia has some of the worst demographics in the world ahead. In fact, they're one of the few countries that has a declining life expectancy because they're drinking themselves to death. If you ever watch a Russian movie, you'd understand why. I think this is going to get worse. And in this geopolitical cycle doesn't turn positive until 2020. So we got six more years of this sort of stuff. So expect more of this, expect more geopolitical conflicts, expect more problems in the Middle East. But that's well. the way to see these governments is they're all like vampire squid, like the caller said, trying to just grab yeah. something to eat it. So it's like two yeah. vampire squid trying to grab Ukraine and absorb it. Well, that's what they want. They like a business. They want to gain market share. Like you said earlier, they want to gain more control over the economy. The economy works best when, when there's just good, solid rules. And you do need rules to the game. But and, and then you let the private economy innovate and, and grow and rebalance itself. Should we bring Glass Steagall back? Government controlling everything. Should we bring Glass Steagall back? Yeah, yeah, that you need. Banks should not. You shouldn't have all these people in all these businesses. Banks should be banks. Investment banks should be investment banks. Brokerage firms should be brokerage firms. Investment firms. I don't even like brokerage firms and investment firms being mixed up because now the broker is going to sell you their own stuff, whether it's in your interest or not. I mean, that, that's that's what they're going to be motivated to do. I think the financial institutions, that's the biggest thing. If we just let each sector do what they do and don't let them cross over, that would eliminate a lot of the problems we've had. Well, I totally agree with you. And um, again, people need to get honest with themselves as a culture that, that we're not just here putting out fear. This, this, is, this is what's going on. You can debate exactly how the cookie's going to crumble, but uh, societally, the denial has to end first to have a real debate to then give the political class the courage to do the right thing because not everybody in the power structure is bad. And a lot of the people in the power structure are scared right now. They just can't get the public to make the right decisions either. No, that's right. I mean, I mean, that is what's needed. And and my my problem is usually I get on CNBC. I'm glad to be on here and have more time. And I got three minutes to explain this. I can't explain this in three minutes. I spent six to seven hours with with audiences in Brisbane and Sydney and Australia, and really got to educate people A to Z about this. And once you do, there is no debate. People agree with me because we're looking at the facts. We're looking at reality, like you say. And this is undeniable. We prove everything we say. Everything I. Say in the book, there's a graph to show the correlation and show whether this is actually. Ha I, I've read books 700 pages long, not a graph on them on economics. How can you do that? So, if people have time to get educated on this, they will see people are not stupid if it's explained to them correctly. But it's not like you say. Everybody, governments and different businesses and institutions all have their motives, and nobody's telling you the truth. I don't work for anybody. I'm not at Merrill Lynch or, or some major company. I can say what. I I find whether it's bullish or bearish, and then no matter what political persuasion it may fall under at the time, I can say what I need to say to people. And I tell you, most people cannot tell you the truth. Your stockbroker cannot tell you the truth. Absolutely cannot. They would be fired from their firm if they did. So let's go back to the other phone calls here and see what they have to say. Uh, let's talk to Justin quickly in Florida. Go ahead, Justin. Um, just want to say great points. Uh, I agree with what you're saying here and uh, uh, good solutions, too. Uh, I guess my other question is, since you pretty much touched on everything, is what do you make of the uh, the recent uh, bankers dropping like flies? 
Uh, Who would you say, bankers? A lot of yeah. banker suicides, a lot of broker suicides, high-level people. Oh, well, I mean, you know, you know what happened in the 1930s. People were jumping off buildings. I mean, these people, I mean, they, a lot of them really need to be tried in, in, in criminal courts, What a lot of what happened here uh, in a lot of things. And when this thing fails, it is going to hit financial institutions. It's going to hit New York City big time. Anybody who just bought a condo for $100 million is going to lose their ass on that. And rich people think you can't possibly lose buying in downtown Manhattan. This is going to especially hit financial institutions and their executives and people. So the, the, there's going to be way more of this. Uh, ahead, and then that's unfortunate, but that's that's just a reality. There you go. Great question, Justin. Uh, let's talk to Wilbur in New York. Go ahead. Hi, Alex. Yes, sir. Hi, Harry. Harry, I get your newsletter, uh, Boom and Bust. It's a good okay. newsletter. Uh, well, let me see. I do a lot of analysis like you do, uh, macro, microeconomics, technical, cyclical analysis, demographic analysis, like you do. My question to you is, given the massive... Uh, housing, real estate a bu a bubble that you talked about in China, which makes ours look like child's play. And now the Ukraine situation, we have really the elites now are duking it out. How deep do you think this downturn, this next shoe down is going to be? I know Prector Rob has got his opinions on it, too. I'd like to see when you're thinking this is going to happen, because I'm absolutely seeing it. It's going to be within weeks to months, not years. How yeah. deep do you see it? And will this change the course of events, assuming the elites, uh, you know, don't knock Oh, yeah, they always them. try to start wars during this stuff, uh, uh, sir. Yeah, you know, uh, bubbles burst, they always burst, and they go back to where they started a little lower. The, the Dow has to get back to 3,800 just to erase the bubble. Housing has to go down 55% just to erase the bubble back to early 2000 when it started, and will probably go down 65%. So I see a much bigger housing downturn over the next several years. Stocks are going to probably go down in two waves. The next wave takes us, like you say, I think it's going to top by early May, if not earlier. It's 17,000 roughly. We're going to go 6,000, a little below in the next pond. Then we'll have a, a bounce after that for a year or two. And then by, by 2019 or 20, I think you're going to see three to 4,000 right. on the Dow. I love the debate, Robert Prechter, because he says I'm too bullish. He's predicting 600 to 1,000. Let's talk to Abe in California. Only got about 30 seconds for him to answer the question. Abe, ask your question. Hey, peace be upon you. It's just a quick comment I wanted to make about the whole humanity situation and where we lie as a species. Look, we, mind, body, and spirit need to rediscover ourselves. We need to immerse ourselves in the natural five senses. Then we'll we will discover the sixth sense, which is, which is essentially a pineal no, I hear We, we got to go, man, because it's a question. But we do have to get back to being real people again and, and, and not just mindless consumers that believe whatever television says. Final comment, Mr. Dent. Well, you know, we have a 250-year revolution cycle. The last one was the American Revolution and the Industrial Revolution. So I think we are going to see a big revolution ahead. And I just tell people, read this book, The Demographic Cliff. I, I killed myself to get this thing out in time. And we've got a free newsletter. We've got paid newsletter like Boom and Bust. We have a free newsletter called Survive and Prosper. And all you do is go to harrydent.com, put all in right. your email, and you're done. Listen, I want to get you back more often than, than yeah. once a year. Sure. I want to invite you on the nightly news. Yep, Come ahead. back when we think this thing's going out. I think I think by May, June, we're going to be in trouble. Uh, man, I hope a lot of smart people are saying that. Thank you so much for the time. Okay, thank you, Alex. Powerful, pretty scary interview, and I see no fall of what the man says. I'm Alex Jones with InfoWars.com. We're going to go a little bit of overdrive here when we come back. InfoWars.com for the free audio streams. Your station doesn't carry it. Nightly news you tonight, 7 o'clock. <laughs> I'm telling you, government's digging in, folks. This, this, is, this is real. This is serious. Today. The facts are in. The studies are legion. Sodium fluoride and other toxic members of the fluoride family are devastating the health and cognitive ability of the American people. So why are the social engineers adding it to the water? Simple. Dumb down the host population that the parasitic technocracy is feeding on. We may not have been able to get fluoride out of the water supply yet, but we can help to get it out of our bodies. I am extremely excited to announce the exclusive InfoWars Life Fluoride Shield Formula Fusing six of the best documented ingredients from around the world to help the body remove not just toxic fluoride residues from the body, but a whole host of toxic substances. Let's take a stand against the globalist by blocking their poisons with Fluoride Shield. 
I use Fluoride Shield every day. Secure your Fluoride Shield and other pioneering formulations at InfoWarsLife.com today. Let's start cleansing our bodies now and support the InfoWar at the same time. That's InfoWarsLife.com. 